Hey everybody, David Henry here from LearnStageLighting.com and in this video I want to show you how to use the M Touch as well as the M Play together. And so we're going to do a couple things here. I'm going to show you in a second here. We're going to dive into the Onyx software and I'm going to show you how these guys both work. Just to give a quick, a quick overview, I have more in-depth videos that cover that a little better. But then, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that I use to run things live on shows with these two devices. So, if you like the M-Touch and M-Play as much as I do, or maybe you're new to this and you, you just got one or two or both of these, then let's dive into the software and I want to show you some things that you can use to help make great lighting fast with the M-Touch and M-Play. All right, folks, David back here with you. And what I want to do here is walk through the M-Touch and the M-Play and kind of show you some tips and tricks and things that I like to do as I'm programming. So you'll see a couple things here on my screens. The first thing that you'll see when I bring up my screens is the Onyx interface, okay? So this is the Onyx software, and this is what the M-Touch and M-Play work with. So if you're not familiar and you haven't downloaded this, check out my playlist that I'm going to link on the YouTube cards right here. It'll also be in the description below. Awesome. I'm also using the Visualizer training file, which is free, and you can use with the training show built into Onyx, and there's a video in that playlist I just linked to. Now, today... I'm going to talk about a variety of things, some of which will overlap the existing videos that I have on the M-Touch and M-Play, but most of it's going to be new. So if you bought one of these already, or both, and you want to learn more about the individual devices, go check out the M-Touch and M-Play videos that I'll link here on the video as well as below. Awesome. So when I'm first programming, um, there's a few things that I like to do. First, I just want to show you where these all lay out in the software. So I've gone in and I've loaded the Onyx training file that comes with the software. And I've gone ahead and there's some stuff laid out on the faders. So for example here, our main faders here, which are one through 10 with buttons 11 through 20, are on the M touch. So the M touch is what you can think of as your main faders, okay? Then here, if we take this to uh, play, on the M touch, this four way selector, these buttons now line up with the buttons on the screen 11 through 20 right there. Now, first I'm gonna walk you through some programming. So I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna do a long press and put them at base because I'm gonna be working with some fixtures here. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and show you if we go here in the workspaces to the DJ workspace, there's a window called M touch M play. It shows you the layout of your M-Touch, and it also shows you the layout of the M-Play. And this is important because the banks on these, when we press these plus and minus arrows to go between different banks, are independent of each other. Whereas the M-Touch is main playbacks, the M-Play is what we call submaster playbacks. And they're not really any different. They're just stored in a different place inside of the software to keep them separate. But you can move things from, from an M-Touch to an M-Play. It's no problem at all. It's all universal within the software. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to the Compose tab here. And I'm just going to select some fixtures here. I'm going to select these Artiste Da Vinci's. And I'm going to go to the 2D plan so we can see what's going on. So this top view right here. Perfect. I'm going to scroll in a little so it fits this screen size a little better. And so now... I'm on my M touch, okay? So I'm on base, and I can see here this top one is blinking. Now on the screen, if I pull up this arrow, I can now see intensity, pan tilt, color, gobo, beam, beam effects. Well, that lines up with these buttons right here. They match, okay? Then we have the uh, last one right here. So it's actually intensity, pan tilt, color, gobo, beam, beam effects. Now. On the other hand, we can press to effects, a quick press here, and now we'll be on this side. You saw it switch in the software as well. When I press the middle of that, you can see it switched in the software. 
And effects is effects, effects timing, fanning, grouping, and rate. So I'll click back to base, and I'm on intensity. So now I can literally just use this. This is like an encoder wheel on other lighting consoles or an encoder belt. And I can literally just bring this up to full. And now my lights are at full. We can see that represented here in the 2D plan. The uh, circles, as you can see, as I move them up and down and filled in, they're at full in the visualizer. Awesome. Now let's click over here to pan tilt. Maybe I'm going to make a position. So I'm just going to go here, for example, point them at the stage. I'm, I'm watching this in my visualizer. So it lines up really good. Awesome. And then I'll go to pan. I'm going to select that there by pressing this top button. And then I'm going to go to effects and to fanning. And this is where you're able to fan fixtures. If you're not familiar with fan, it just takes the selected attribute and applies a level to it in a nonlinear fashion. So, for example, if I start to wiggle it, you know, one way or another, you can see how the lights move and make some really interesting stuff. For example, there we can make a, a nice center stage preset here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, you should always save things to presets before cues. But there's already actually a preset here, but I'll just, I'll go to pan tilt here. There's already a lead singer preset, but I'm going to record another one. So I just go ahead, I press record, and I can touch on my touch screen or with my mouse in this case to a preset. And now I can type a name. I'll call it downstage center DSC. So now if I clear once, I deselect my fixtures. If I clear twice, I'm going to deselect everything inside of Onyx. Okay, next thing. Let's go ahead and uh, start, you know, running things live. So there's this built-in show, and it's got some stuff in it. And I can literally just go ahead and, you know, bring up the intensity, if I'm running a live show, of some different fixtures here. Okay, and then I've also got my front wash fixtures here on the M Play. And so if I were, you know, running a show on this, um, I would put some tape here. And that's what I always do is put some console tape here, some artist tape, something like that. And I label my stuff here. But you can always go ahead and have that M Touch M Play window up, which again is over here in DJ. And then I can see, OK, this one right here is singer, keyboard, guitar, drummer. And it says key. That means a uh, key light. So you've got that going. And it's kind of in order of, you know, importance per se, with the singer being the one you'll probably use more than the keyboard and guitar, and then the drummer. Poor guy doesn't get lit too much usually. I'm just going to pull those guys up here. And, you know, now I can begin recording some more stuff in. So say, for example, I go to my end play here, and I'm looking at it on the screen, but, you know, I'm going to go back to the programming section, compose workspace here, and I'm going to select... My Artiste Da Vinci's, and I'm gonna put them in this up fanned pan. Grab my fuse wash and find something that looks good for that. Eh, what do I like? Do a nice cross position for that. And so now I've got a position. I can go to my programmer here, and I can see that I'm only working with position. That's all I've brought in. I haven't brought in any other attributes. So I'm just going to go ahead and program that to a button here on my M touch or my M play rather. So I'll just go ahead back to my grooves presets. Press record here on the M touch. Boom. Now I'm ready to press a button on my M play. So I'm going to store positions and I'll store them over here. Cool. So now I've pressed record. I've selected my button. Now on the screen, I see that we can enter a name and a cue list type. These positions, I'm going to just do a regular cue list and I'll call it a, Cross. Awesome. Now that's saved. Now I'll go with my fuses. Maybe I'll do uh, maybe I'll do them up for my second one and take the Da Vinci's and do them in one of these down positions. Cool. We'll record that. Next list. Give it a name. Name and uh, down up. I'm not being very creative here, but you get the idea. Now, if I clear twice, I can go ahead. Everything clears out. I can play these back. Okay. Now they've got the default timing to them, but there's just two positions I could have in my live show. Okay. Now I like to do more with these and, you know, inside of places like learn stage lighting labs that you may have heard of, it's a 
program I have where you can get access to a lot of videos and personalized trading. I've got a complete guide to running things live and on the fly, and it's called Puntastical. And so I definitely consider checking that out. I'll pop up a link on the screen where you can get some more info on the labs. But, you know, you can run things live just like this. Another example is if I switch this, I'm on effects here on my M touch. And now if I go down here to rate, we see on my screen, we have four encoder wheels that are also matched on the screen. Global fade speed, global effects, selected cueless speed, and live time speed. Say I go into global fade speed here, and I set that to 200%. Now the movements between these are twice the fast, twice as fast. And so I can go, you know, on my fader here, and I can change the speed. You know, say it's a, a, a very fast song, I want the lights to move as fast as they can. I just crank that up. You know, I can crank it back down, maybe real slow, if I want to do a real slow movement. So that's just one of the ways that Onyx can move really well live, okay? Now, I can go ahead. Another example I could do is pressing select and pressing plus. I get an NU on my screen. So now this is a number pad, and I'm going to pop up on my screen here. This is the pad that uh, it goes with it. In fact, I'll bring an image in here from the manual website that shows you how this is mapped. But I can literally, you know, type on here, and I get the various different buttons on the screen. Um, and... Uh, I'm able to get those here and type with them. So I don't have these labeled myself, but I can see here I've got invert selection, deselect. I've got my numbers here along the side. I've got at key. I've got through. I've got all kinds of stuff like that. So I'll put that on the display as well. If I press select and press minus, I get function keys. And so what function keys are is if I go ahead, say I press edit on my M touch and I touch a key. Now it brings me, once I unlock here, I can press, oops, not record, press clear, press edit, press a key, and now I'm brought to that function key, and I'm able to assign a function to it. Now, inside of Onyx, there's a lot you can do with the function keys. And so, I'm not going to go into detail here, but you can do views, individual windows, some different commands that are available inside of the console. Um, you can work with individual fixtures, you know, just select them with a key, groups, presets, etc. So, you know, I can literally go in here, do my Artiste da Vinci's here, do a preset, you know, say we do um, strobe slow, or no, let's do, let's do intensity at full here, and intensity at zero here. Okay, so that's F1, F2, and F3. Now I'm going to go back, using this back arrow, go to my visualizer here. And I can now select my fixture, okay? I saw it select on the screen as well as here. And then I can literally press this intensity full to zero to full to zero. And I can run things live off the function keys. So this is something I like to do a lot because it allows you to really punt live using your M play, okay? So literally, I can go in here and I'm going to use the live time rate fader here. I'm just going to pull that up to, to one second. So now that's the time that I get when I type these buttons. So I can go here, you know, press some different buttons here, you know, full back to zero. And it's gonna fade at the time that's set on the lifetime, which I've kept up on the M Touch. So that's another great way you can use this. Now there's a lot of tricks to using all this and I want to show you one more. So I'm just gonna press clear twice here. And I'm gonna go ahead and build a quick chase. Okay. So a chase inside of Onyx is when you just put something on a cue list that bounces between a variety of different individual cues, okay? So let's give an example. Say I go ahead and I'm going to turn off all my movers here. Cool. And I just go grab my first set of fixtures and I'll take them at full so I can do that either on the keypad or by clicking base here. Go to intensity, take it to full. I'm going to record that. I'm going to put it on this fader of my M play. And I'm going to make it a chase. So I'm just going to name it chase intensity. I'm going to spell it wrong. And then type click chase, this blue guy right here. And we've started building our chase. So now I can go ahead, grab a different set of fixtures, take them at full. Boom. I'm going to go ahead and take my Da Vinci's to zero. Awesome. So now those fuse washes right here 
Yep, they're at full. A little hard to see in the visualizer. Press record. Press my button. Actually, I've got to press select and press my button when adding a second queue. That's a little protection in there for you. And now I can go take those back down, grab my Keller courses to a full. Awesome. Well, those are those strip lights. We'll skip those. Let's just do the movers here. Grab the darts 360s to full. Cool. Record. Select, press my button. Boom. We've recorded it. So now if I press clear twice, I can go ahead and play back this chase. We can now see the chase going between the different cues here. Now let me go to the M play window and set something up here. So we'll go to DJ. We're going to right click on this chase intensity. And in the window that pops up, we're going to go ahead and type in global rate here. Now when we press global rate and we use that, the B button, which is both here in the M touch and in the same place on the M play, is going to activate the chase. Awesome. Now when we set it to the global rate and begin changing the BPM, we do need to actually go ahead, double click, stop that chase or bring it down, dump it out, and then restart it. And then we're going to see it obeying our command. So now it's literally going, if I start speeding it up here, bring that fader up and press play. It's literally, as we can see, flying through that chase. In fact, it's going a little bit fast there, but as I tap the tempo in, it's going to follow that tempo every time. Awesome. Now, another option here is um, it automatically uses this fade percent, which is whether it fades or jumps between the different cues. So right now it's fading between the three cues in the chase. But if I go ahead and set that to zero percent, it's, it's going to go ahead, press enter. It's going to go ahead and then jump through those cues, which makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. See, I can speed it up here as I tap it to the beat. It goes in. You can really play, you can do a lot with this fade percentage. For example, if you type in here, click it and press uh, 25%, now it's going to go and it's going to fade for 25% of the chase. And then the rest of the time, it's going to, uh, you know, pause between the different steps. So those are some options there. Um, I hope this video has been insightful to you. I hope it's helped. And I hope it's helped you to understand getting started with the M Touch and M Play. They're really actually quite simple pieces of hardware. And once you spend a little time in the Onyx software, um, remember to check out my videos on it, you'll really become comfortable with using these inside of the software as they really do integrate naturally with it. Until next time, I'm David Henry from LearnStageLighting.com. And uh, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube. And don't forget to click the bell to get the latest videos here from Learn Stage Lighting. Have a great day.